This question is a disaster. Uh, I'm just gonna say, unless you are shooting for that perfect 800, you probably don't even wanna watch this video. This is just really, really crazy. There's this algebra way to do it, and then there is a kind of strategy way to do it. Both of them are messy, so it really takes a deep understanding of math to, to get them. This is not a high, high priority question for most people. But let me start with the algebra, because I think that that is what, uh, if you do this work on the College Board or the Khan Academy, they're gonna try to show you. So um, what I would do here, if I'm looking at this, I know I'm gonna have to solve for X, right? They're asking for a solution, and I know C is involved, but it, it doesn't bother me too much. I'm kinda of trust the process a little bit. And I do see that even though I've got these crazy fractions, they both have the same denominator. So that's useful. I mean, it's very annoying to work with fractions, but if they have the same denominator, it's not so bad. So what I might do here is just kind of like move the this term to this side so that I can actually subtract them and kind of combine these two fractions into one. So what's going to end up happening is I'm going to have x squared over the radical x squared minus c squared minus c squared over radical x squared minus c squared is equal to 39. Then, because they have the same denominator, I'm just subtracting, I can combine them, and I end up with x squared minus c squared all over the square root of x squared minus c squared, and that is equal to, I'm gonna give some space here for a reason, equal to 39. From here, you might be tempted to get rid of the fraction by multiplying, and I guess you can do that, but I don't know, it just, it's such a mess, this, this whole thing. Um, what I would do here, maybe this isn't even the right call, is I would try to rationalize the denominator. Basically in math, we don't like it when there's a radical in um, a, 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 the denominator of a fraction, the bottom of a fraction. There's lots of reasons for that, but just take my word for it. So one way we can deal with that is if we multiply by x squared minus c squared on the bottom, the two radicals will basically cancel out. So I'll just get rid of the radical. I'll still have a messy denominator, but it'll be less messy kind of in the eyes of a mathematician. But you can't just go multiplying uh, a random number by a random part of an equation. You have to balance things out. But when we, we rationalize the denominators, what we're doing is we are basically just multiplying by one. So I'm multiplying the denominator by that, but I'm also gonna multiply the numerator by that because even though it's a messy looking thing, because it's the same messy thing on the top and the bottom, I'm basically just multiplying the left side by one, which we know if you multiply something by one, doesn't actually change its value. It's gonna change the way it looks, but it's not changing the value. And this is why I'm not also doing this to the right side, is I'm not, I'm not moving things like I was before. I'm just, I'm just multiplying one side by one. It's, it's very easy. Um, so, what is that gonna give me? It's gonna give me, um, x squared minus c squared times the square root of x squared minus c squared over, well again, those radicals cancel out, so that's x squared minus c squared equals 39. And now this piece occurs on both the top and the bottom, so I can cross it out. So this lets me have a much simpler x squared minus c squared is equal to 39. And this is where it gets a little annoying. I mean, I, you kind of have to trust the process a little bit. You can kind of look at your answers. You see that they're not going to square the, the 39. They're just going to leave it as 39 squared. So that means that when I do the squaring to get rid of this, the square root, I'm not going to square 39 in my calculator. I'm just going to leave it as 39 squared. But I'm still kind of using the rules of algebra to simplify this thing. And eventually, I want to get x alone. So if I want x alone, now x is pretty darn close to it. I have to add the c squared to both sides. I'm gonna get x squared is equal to c squared plus 39 squared. And now to get x completely alone, I need to get rid of the square, and so I take the square root of both sides. And when I do that, I get that x is equal to the square root of c squared plus 39 squared. And some of you are gonna be tempted to apply that square root to the two squares and cancel them out, but it doesn't work like that because there's this plus that's in between them. So we can't just, we, we, the, the radical can't work with those two numbers. It has to work with it as a unit. It's kind of why before, um, at this step, 
um, even actually all the way back to the beginning, when we had a square root of x squared minus c squared, that does not reduce to just x minus c. Again, that, that minus there is kind of preventing the radical from interacting with the exponents, the squares. It just it doesn't work for kind of order of operations reasons. Now I have an answer there, and hopefully it's an answer. I know it's not, but I'm pretty darn close. So it's not a, it's not b. C is kind of close, but we see there's this negative inside. I don't have that. D is much closer, right? I have a plus inside, that's good. The problem is where'd this negative come from? Well, this is something your teacher definitely told you at some point, and a lot of you use this too much because it usually doesn't apply. But when we take a square root like we are here, we have to remember that we kind of have two possible values, right? The x could have been positive or negative because when it's squared, it would the both results would be positive. So we have to account for that. And so when they ask, which of the following is one of the solutions, one of the solutions will have that negative, and that's why D ends up being the right answer. Um, I told you this was a mess. Like, first of all, this is crazy algebra, even if you know what you're doing, but why would so many of you, why would you even have these ideas to like move things over, rationalize denominators, simplify like this? It's just, it, you have to know too much. Maybe there's a simpler way that I'm just not seeing, but that's where my brain takes me. My, my instinct is when I've got fractions, kind of bring them together and see if you can combine them into one fraction so we can do easier things with them. There is another way though. Um, I don't know that it's any easier. We're going to try. Uh, basically, I could use the arithmetize strategy if I'm very clever. Now, we've done other questions where we've had equations and we've graphed things. So I, I tried that. Right, so this is it. You can kind of kind of cut off there, but you can kind of make out the 39. Um, the problem is it's got this little, see the little like exclamation point triangle thing. And if I zoom around, I don't. Nothing is graphed. So why? What's going on? What, what's what's the deal? Well, if I tap it, it says something kind of mathematical. We only support implicit equations of x and y. Basically, the problem is the c is just too messy for this thing to handle. I want it to solve this equation for me, but in order to do it, I need to get rid of the C and make it a number. And technically it is a number. It's always been a number. Look at what they say originally. They say C is a positive constant. They're telling me that C is a positive number. They're not telling me what it is, but that's okay because I can solve with it as a, as a letter, but it certainly would have been easier all along if it were a number instead. Because then I could have worked a lot of this algebra out in a nicer way. Uh, the, the calculator can do some of the work for me. So this is where the arithmetize comes in, is they don't tell me what positive constant it has to be. So I'm gonna make one up. Now I'm gonna pretend that C is equal to one. Now let's see if I can make the change here. I gotta change all my C's to one. And we know that one squared is gonna just be um, one, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try to just keep it as close to what it looks like as possible. So see if I can do this nicely. So that C becomes a one. That C becomes a one. And ooh, come on. Oh, you can do it. There we go. This C becomes a one. And suddenly there we go. We got some lines. We got some purples. So what does this mean? Well, it's solving this crazy equation for me. And the vertical lines are basically x equals lines. So whatever they say, those are my values of x. Those are my solutions. So I can look and I can see I've got two. Oh, is it really not going to tell them to me? There might be a way for me to do this. This is really what kills me. So, okay, there it is. It's 39. Um, right, that's 39, maybe 39 and some decimals. And this is, if I go all the way over, This is also 39, or negative 39. So when I do this, my calculator is telling me that the x values are positive and negative 39. Okay, so c is negative one, x is equal to 39 or negative 39. I don't know why it's not just letting me tap and see that. Normally it does, I think it has something to do with the radical, I think it's doing like limits or something and it's getting annoyed, but that's okay. So what do I do with that? Because that's not an answer. Well, what I would do here 
is um, I would try to plug in one for C and see if any of those gives me that. I think it's gonna be a decimal. I think it's not quite 39. I think I'm just zooming in a little different, but let's see. So if I plugged in one for C here, that would just be negative one. That's definitely not 39 or negative 39, so that's wrong. This would be negative one squared minus 39 squared. So we can do that in the calculator. That, that negative one squared is just gonna be um, negative one and then 39 squared, normal calculator, times 39, is 1521. Those negatives are not squared because they're not, there's no parentheses telling me to square those. So this is gonna be a crazy negative number, right? This is negative uh, 1522. So that's also not positive or negative 39, so that's no good. Let's see if this works. I'm really nervous, this might not work. <laughs> So this is going to be negative, the square root of 39 squared. We said that's 1521 minus 1 squared, so that's 1. So that's the square root, negative square root of 1520. So 1520 square root is a crazy number. So this is negative. Oh, this is not going to work the way I wanted. 38.99. So it's so close to negative 39. Oh, this isn't going to work. Um, this one also is going to give me something nice. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, there we go. So 1 squared plus 1521. Let's see if this, this actually might work. Here, I think it might. So this is going to be um, 1 plus 1520. So this is the square negative square root of 1522. So 1522 square root. Okay. Oh, this is going to work, but it's going to take some finesse here. Zero, uh, negative 39.01. Okay. <laughs> so notice C and D are really, really close, but the difference is important, right? C is a little bit, um, I guess that's uh, greater than negative 39, and D is a little bit less than negative 39, just a little. So... If I go back to my thing, look at that, that purple line, right? It looks like it's 39 and I can zoom in and look, it's right between 38 and 40. Let's keep zooming. Let's keep zooming. Oh, look, look at it. If we see it, there's 39, but it's a little bit more negative, right? It's a little bit smaller than negative 39, right? It's tricky because we're on the negative side of the axis, right? But if you go to the left, that's more negative. What was more negative? negative 39.01. So again, I can't tap it. Maybe if I zoom in even more, oh, there it is, right? Negative 39.01, it's closer to that. <laughs> so that would be my proof that D is the answer and not the incredibly close to it C. If you're confused, yeah, I don't blame you. This is crazy confusing. But maybe, maybe if you're at that 790 and you've got four minutes to play with, and you understand how to do arithmetize, you understand the concept and what it does for us, the way it lets things that are hypothetical, things that are abstract become real, become numbers. And guess what? Our calculators, they love numbers. They can work with numbers. They can't work with positive constants. So if we can think of arithmetize in this way, maybe with just brute force and determination, we can get this kind of crazy hard question. If not, don't worry about it. No college is going to care if you got a 780 instead of an 800, okay? And especially because of this question. They don't, they don't measure that level of difference. So this is really just for people who are really pushing themselves. It's a crazy question with some crazy solutions, but hopefully I've given you something that you can take away for the next crazy question that comes up.